hours. A lot of people are still getting to bed on a Sunday morning usually, right? Mm -hmm. But we do appreciate you coming out this morning to join us for our sunrise service. Thank God for clearing, clearing the clouds out. We still see the moon right there. Hopefully it won't be very long and we'll be seeing the sun come up from behind me right here. And thinking about that resurrection morning, I wonder how much sleep Mary got that night. Say she come running to the tomb. And I'm just wondering with everything that transpired, I mean, she had to wait for that day to go to the tomb because of being the Sabbath. So whenever she was going, I, I mean, I slept several hours last night, but I think on that night, probably there was many people that did not sleep thinking about what was supposed to be partaking that next day on the third day. The song we're going to sing this morning, everybody's got sheet music. If everybody's comfortable and you want to sit, that's fine. But if you want to stand while we sing, we can. I thought, first of all, you know, the way it looked, we may have to get our phones out and shine a light on the page so we can actually see what we were singing. But I think it's lightened up enough now that we can probably see what we're singing. But if you want to stand, you can stand. If not, we just sing our cappella this morning. Christ the Rose. We'll sing all three verses on that. Then when we get done, we'll go to God in prayer. Thank Him for allowing us to be here this morning before we get started in the service. Starting on the first. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with the mighty triumph o'er his foe. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watched his bed, Jesus my Savior. Vainly they still the dead, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with the mighty triumph for his foe. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. He arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep his prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph for his foe. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Go to God in prayer this morning. Ask Brother Justice if he would pray us the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you now, Lord, and we just want to thank you, Lord, for uh, this morning, Lord. Thank you for allowing the rain to push out, Lord. And most of all, we thank you for the morning, Lord, that you did arise. Lord, thank you for that morning that you did raise up, Lord, out of that grave, that you conquered death, hell, and the grave, Lord, to give us a way to spend eternity with you. Lord, we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for just allowing us to be able to have that peace and knowing, Lord, that we know you as Savior. Lord, I pray, Lord, if there's one here that doesn't know you as Savior, Lord, that today be the day. Now be the accepted time of salvation. Lord, we just love you and we thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Lord, I just want to give you the glory this morning. I just want to give you all the honor and praise that you deserve, Lord. It's not about what the preacher has to say. It's not about anything, Lord, but it's about you. It's about what you have done for us this morning, Lord. We just thank you for it, Lord. We just want to magnify and honor you this morning. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Y'all want to fight the fight and bring them in and put them in for you whenever we leave here. Amen. Are you thankful he arose this morning? Hey. Amen. I'm glad that you're here this morning. I'm glad that you all arose out of the bed early to come be a part of our uh, sunrise service this morning. Good to see this great crowd out today. Uh, we're going to be in John chapter number 20, and I know you're all cold. I know it's, uh, it, we can tell that it's Easter morning because it's cold this morning. Amen. It's been 80 degrees up to the day, but it's cold. That's what Easter always happens on Easter Sunday morning. So I'll be brief this morning, but I do want to share a, a word that the Lord has laid upon my heart today. And I pray that it'll be a blessing to you. And i tell you what I've also been praying. I, I've been praying that God would do a work here this morning. Yes. How many of you believe this morning that God can save somebody here today? Amen. 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 Right. Hey, listen, God is able to do anything. If he got up out of that grave and, and arose, he can do anything this morning. If we just have faith that he can, and that's what I've been praying. God would just uh, meet especially with us this morning. You know, many people this week has, have asked me the question. They said, what are you doing for sunrise service this week? Uh, are you dressing up? Uh, who are you going to be this week for sunrise service? And for some of you that weren't here a few years back, uh, the Lord allowed me to, to dress up as a Roman centurion and, and come out and give the gospel presentation from the view of a Roman soldier that nailed Jesus to the cross. And God used that in a mighty way. And, and I, everywhere I go, people say, I remember that sunrise service. It was so different and so distinct. And, and I say, you know what, I guess I set the bar too high there because I, I'm not dressing up this morning. But you know what, I, I was reminded this morning by one of the most dearest pastors that I know on, on social media. He, he said this, Brother Jonathan McNeese, he said this, yeah. he says, Preacher, it's not about theatrics today. Right. <laughs> Listen, this is not a show. We're not, we're not here to, to entertain you this morning. Right. I've come here to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ that got up out of the grave. I come to give glory to his name. I come to point you to him this morning. Listen, it ain't about a preacher. It ain't about a song. It ain't about anything. It's all just like Brother Dusty said this morning. It's all about him. Yes, it's yes. all because he got out of an empty tomb. Yes. And all because he got up and, and defeated death and hell in the grave and gave us the opportunity to have eternal life this morning. Yes. That's why we're here. Uh, that's why I'm here this morning. Right. I hope that's why you're here. Uh, but I was wondering, I said, I wonder what gets people out of the bed so early in the morning to come worship the Lord. Is it tradition? You know, sometimes we do things just because we've always done them. Uh, we, we come to sunrise service because that's part of our tradition. And listen, I'm not against tradition. I think there are things in tradition that are good, and we should do them. But if we're just doing them because they're tradition, and we're not doing the right the right way. Right. Right. Listen, it's not just tradition. We're doing this thing because of what Jesus has done. Right. Are we here by obligation this morning? If do you feel obliged to be here because maybe you hold a position in the church or, or something? I hope you don't feel obligated to come this morning. I hope you came because you came seeking a risen Savior right. this morning. I wonder this morning what it'd be. Some of you are here because your mom and daddy went and woke you up out of the bed, young people, amen, and said, get up, we're going to sunrise service. And I say, amen, mom and daddy, hey, amen. amen, good job for getting your kids out of the bed this morning, bringing them to the house of God, sitting outside on a cold Sunday morning. One of these days when they're old, they'll remember that. Right. They'll remember how you raised them. They'll remember the truth that they heard out of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they'll want to get their kids out of bed. They want to wake them up and they'll come to, to church. Right. Maybe it's the food that you're here for. Amen. How many of y'all hungry this morning? Amen. I hope you all stay and eat with us. There is going to be food afterwards. But listen, the, Jesus said this. I, uh, man should not live by bread alone, but right. by every word that proceedeth right. out of the mouth of God. Listen, I, I hope you come not just for the sausage and biscuits and gravy this morning, but I hope you come for the bread of life. Hey, Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and all those that are hungry can come unto me and shall be filled this morning. He is all those things to us. Did you come because it was convenient this morning? Hey, listen, not much convenience can take place in a, a 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning, but maybe you came early so you can get away and be with family. And if that's why you came this morning, praise God, listen, at least you came. Right. I hope you didn't just come because it was convenient this morning. I hope you came seeking 
a Savior. You come for fellowship this morning. <laughs> hey, one of the sweetest things we can have is Christian fellowship. Mm-hmm. Going around shaking one another's hand and just seeing each other. Boy, that's the, that, that is one of the great uh, uh, attributes and great blessings of being in the family of God is we always got family to fellowship with. Listen, every Sunday morning is a family reunion, amen. Right. We get to go to the house of the Lord and see him. Did you come out of obedience? Oh, some of us come because he got up out of the grave this morning. And you said, Lord, I'm going to go worship you. I'm going to be obedient unto you. I'm going to do what you called me to do. Maybe it's not just obedience, but faithfulness because you believe in the, in the empty tomb this morning. Listen, none of you saw, have seen that tomb being empty this morning. But by faith, you believe that it is empty. And by faith, you believe that the tomb is empty, but the throne is occupied this Amen. morning. Listen, and by faith, you believe that Jesus arose out of the grave, conquered death, hell in the grave, and has he given us eternal life this morning. By faith, we believe that. And then we come to worship this morning. Amen. I hope you come to worship Amen. his holy name this morning. Listen, he's worthy today. Amen. 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 Listen, he's worthy to be worshiped this morning. So whatever you came, Whatever the reason you came out of bed this morning, I'm glad that you came. Amen. Listen, this is what, what Paul said when he went to, to into Rome. He says, don't, don't think that what's happened unto me is a bad thing. He says, well, I'm in Rome and I'm arrested, but it's coming for the furtherance of the gospel. He said, it's, it's allowed the gospel to be preached in all different places and there's people preaching gospel. And some of them ain't preaching it right and some of them ain't doing it right, but this is what he says. At least they're preaching, amen. amen. <laughs> and listen, you may not be here for the right reason this morning, but at least you're here. Right. But I tell you what I believe this morning. I believe you're all here for the right, right. reason this morning, right. amen. I believe you come here seeking a risen Savior, just as Mary Magdalene did on that first Easter sunrise morning when she went to the tomb and she had an Easter encounter. I want to talk to you this morning just real quickly about an Easter enca- encounter. Look what it says in John chapter 20. Listen, you don't have to turn, just listen. The Bible says the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre. Seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre, she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth that, and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. And they both ran together, and the other cycle, uh, disciple did outrun Peter and came to the fir- first of the sepulchre. And stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Hey. Then went in. Also the, that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But you know what Jesus said unto Thomas? He says, listen, uh, he said, Thomas said, I, I won't believe unless I can see him, unless I can touch him. But he says, blessed are those that did not see yet still believe. Right. I wonder this morning, are you blessed because you hadn't seen the risen Savior with your physical eyes but with your eyes of faith you've seen him the bible says you'll believe be blessed because you have seen and, and have not seen and believe it says in verse 9 for as yet they know not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead then jesus went away unto their own home but mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping and as she wept she stooped down and looked in the sepulcher and two angels in white sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they were, and they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And she said, and she and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew that it was not Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary. And she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not ascended yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, 
and to my God and to your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples what she had saw and that she had seen the Lord and that she had spoken these things unto her. <laughs> Amen. Listen, Mary Magdalene had an Easter encounter with a risen Savior this right. morning. Listen, do you know something about Mary Magdalene? She had already had an encounter with Jesus before. Uh, she had met him. If you look in, at back in the Gospels in Luke chapter, uh, I believe it is, Luke chapter number 8, verse number 2, it says Mary uh, was there and Jesus had cast out seven demons out of her body and she had already had a change. She had already had an encounter with God but that changed her life. Right. But yet she's about to have another encounter. How many of y'all know uh, you can have more one encounter with yeah. Jesus this right. morning? Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, I, I, I feel sorry for those Christians that only have a one and done encounter right. with yeah. him. Hey, right. listen, I can't get enough of him. Hey. He's hey. better than Lay's right. potato chips this morning. Yeah. You know what they say about Lay's potato chips? You can't yeah. have just one. Right. I'm here to tell you, you can't right. have just one encounter yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. When you have a true encounter with Jesus, you seek him every day. Yeah. Saying, I want another one of them. Yeah. I want him to touch me again. Yeah. Hey. I want him to, hey, I believe that's why she was there that morning. She done had an encounter, and she went seeking the Savior. Listen, but she went seeking him in, a, in, a, in the wrong state. Oh, she went seeking him as a dead Savior, a corpse laying in the grave. Oh, but when she got there, hey, man, somebody help me. I worship the Lord this morning. When she got there, she realized that Jesus was changed and that Jesus was about to change her life again. And, and God was about to do something for the whole world that she couldn't even believe. Listen, Mary needed another encounter with Jesus. I wonder this morning if you're here. You say, preacher, I've had an encounter. I've been saved for years. How about some fresh oil this right. morning? Amen. Amen. How about get a little bit of fresh Amen. oil poured out of on right. you this morning and get excited again about what Jesus has done. Don't live off of what Jesus did for you 25 years right. ago. Amen. Don't live off of what Jesus did right. for you 40 years ago. Don't live off what Jesus for, did for you last Sunday. Amen. Amen. Live off what he can do for you right. today. Amen. Listen, he can do something for you today. She came to find that out. She had an encounter, encounter with Jesus, and she continued to be changed. I want you to know that Easter is a story of change, a change from an obedient servant. The Bible says that Jesus was obedient unto death. He was an obedient servant unto death. But when they laid him in that grave, uh, he, he became changed from being an obedient servant unto death to a living Savior. Listen, now on that first Easter Sunday morning, he arose out of the grave. And he came out, not just a, 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 an obedient servant, but a, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Right. Easter is about change. Easter can change your life this morning. Listen, not the day, but the person of Easter can change right. your life. Amen. Listen, a, 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 a Sunday a morning sunrise service ain't going to change you this morning. But the one we worship on that yeah, Easter yeah, sunrise right. service will change right. you. Amen. He'll, he'll give you a redemption of your sin. <laughs> he'll, he'll give you a reviving of your heart. It's Jesus that will change you this morning. I won't change. Listen, I got I I I have got a lot of Jesus in my lifetime. Ain't you, Brother Edward? Amen. And we seek Amen. him. Right. But I want him again. Amen. I want him today. Yeah. Right. I want him this morning. I want him to show up and show out yeah. today. Amen. I want him to do something in my life. I want him to answer my prayers today. And I want to worship his holy name. Amen. I hope you want that this morning. Listen, you can have it. Uh, do you know you, you can have it? Yeah, all you got to do is just come to him this morning. She found out that Jesus was alive. And brother, I was talking to Brother Shannon Mouth this past Friday night at a, at a get together. And he made this, this uh, observation to me. He said, you know, there's many times in scripture where Jesus was right in the middle of everything and people didn't recognize him. I wonder if there's ever been a time in your life when you was going through something and you thought Jesus was was far away, but really he was right in the middle of it. Yeah, right? Right. Listen, Mary came to the sepulcher that morning weeping, and she didn't recognize Jesus, but Jesus was there. Right? Y'all remember when yeah. Peter and, and all those men were on the sea? And the wind was boisterous and a great storm blew in upon them and Jesus came to them walking on the water. Yeah. You know what they saw? Jesus was right in the middle of it. They said, it's a ghost. Right. And that ghost is coming to kill us. But it was Jesus right Amen. in the middle of it. Right. About to say, peace, be still to the storm. Listen, I wonder.
Easter. Do you remember those two on Emmaus Road? After Jesus was resurrected, he walked to them all the way down the road and he talked to them and he, he told them the gospel and he gave them the scripture, but they did not recognize him until he revealed himself. He broke bread and he showed yeah. them his, his things. And then they realized, hey, he was right here all the time. Amen. They said this, did our hearts not burn within us when he talked to us? I wonder whatever situation you're in, if you may be wondering this morning, where's Jesus? It may be that Jesus is there right in the middle. You just hadn't recognized him. You just hadn't put your eyes upon him, recognized who he is. And, and, and I thought to myself, uh, today, we're like a Mary a lot of times in the middle of what we're going through. We don't recognize that Jesus is right there. He's right in the midst of us just waiting to com comfort our hearts, to, to deliver us from what we're going through, from doing those things. But we must recognize him. How do we recognize him? Well, we recognize him by his voice. Listen, I'm, I'm even out of my notes this morning. But let me say this. When, when, when Mary showed up, she, had, she showed up with the wrong emotion. The Bible says she stayed outside and she wept. And if you look that up in the Greek, that means that she uh, wailed and she lo uh, had long cries. Can I give you the Black Jack Mountain translation? She bawled her eyes out. Right. That's what it means. She bawled her eyes out outside that tomb because Jesus wasn't there. His body was gone, and she thought somebody had stolen him away. She came with the wrong emotion that morning. I wonder how many of us approach our day with the wrong emotion. You know emotion can set the tone for your day. Right. How you wake up and roll out of bed. Lord's preaching to me right now. Y'all help? You're preaching. Right. I'm telling you. How you wake up and roll out of bed with the emotions that you have will set the tone for your day. If you roll out of bed ill and cranky, you're going to be ill and cranky the whole day. Right. You roll out of bed mad because you got to go to work, you're going to be mad all day at work. You roll out of bed every morning tired, you're going to be tired yeah. all day long. Your emotions will set the tone. <coughs> Mary showed up sad because Jesus was dead. But did you know if you wake up in the morning, roll out of bed and say, Lord, thank you for another yes, day. Right. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Lord, that you let me wake up. Right. Hey, there's a lot of folks across this world that didn't wake up today, but right. I did. Thank right. you, Jesus. Do you know something? That day's going, you're going to be thankful all day long because you set the, the tone for your emotions. If you wake right. up that morning and say, Lord, thank you for a good Dang. job that I get to go work at. Thank you for a paycheck that goes into my bank account yeah. at the end of the week. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you for supplying all my needs according to your riches and glory. You won't be mad at that job, but you'll be happy because God's provided for you. The emotion set the tone for the day. Her emotion set the tone. She was sad. She was weeping. She was thinking everything was gone. You know, it's hard to see truth through tears. It's hard to see truth when you when you're upset and crying it's hard to to see god through grief it's hard when you wake up every morning you lost somebody that you love to see jesus and to wonder how what in the world is going on listen but listen if you just clear your emotions and say god i trust that you know what's best for me and that all things work together for good to those that are the called to those that are called according to the purpose uh, listen i promise you that it will change the way you think she started out with the wrong emotion. She was sad. She was crying. But I'm thankful today that Jesus changed her emotion. Mm -hmm. It's what happened when, when Jesus, when she come out, she turned around, and she saw him, but remember, she didn't recognize him. Yeah. She's supposed to be the gardener. Mm -hmm. But this is what he said. She said, if you just tell me where you laid him, I'll go get him. I'll take him away. And she said, he said this, he said, Mary. Right. <laughs> Woo! When he, said, when he said her name, you know what she did? She said, Master. Right. Hey, she'd heard right. that voice before. Right. Listen, she, had, she didn't recognize his face, but she recognized his hey. voice. This is what right. the Bible says about Jesus. She said, I am the good shepherd, yeah. and the sheep 
Know my voice. Amen. Right. Amen. Listen, I wonder when's the last time he called your name. Amen. Right. When's the last time he called out to you and said, Dusty or right. Nicole or Tony. Hey, listen, I want you to know that today he's calling some of y'all's names out right. this morning. Amen. Today he's calling you to be saved. Today he's been dealing with your heart for some time. Today he's been saying, I want you to be saved and be a part of my family. Right. Yet he, you haven't responded to his call. What are you going to do when he calls your name today? What are you going to do when he says, hey, come forward? Hey, what are you going to do when, you, when, he, when he reaches out? I tell you what you need to do. You need to be like, like Mary and say, master. <laughs> hey. Listen, that's what he is Amen. this morning. He's our master. Amen. He's our savior. He's our risen king. He came with the wrong emotion, but he also came with the wrong expectation. I'm about to close that. What did she expect to find when she got there? A body. A body. A corpse. The other gospel accounts say she came with spices to anoint the body. Yeah. She came expecting to find a dead body in the grave. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. What do you expect to find when you go looking for Jesus? Yes, Listen, he ain't dead this morning. Hey, all right? hey, I got breaking news for you. He ain't dead right. this morning. He wasn't dead that morning. Listen, Amen. he arose out of the grave. Amen. She come expecting to find a body, but what she found was a risen Savior. Amen. Right. What she found was a conquering king. What she found was somebody to give her power, right. somebody to give her faith, somebody to give her what she stood in need of. She came with the wrong expectation. Oh, but I tell you, when you come to him with the right expectation, Jesus said, I can do all things to those that would believe. I remember in the gospel stories, there's two that came unto Jesus with faith, believing, and Jesus commented on their faith, saying, I have not seen so great a faith in all of Israel. There was an old Canaanite woman that came, and she said, oh, Lord, I need you to do something for me. But would you just, would you do this? And Jesus looked at her and said, listen, I didn't come for you dogs. That's what he said. He said, I, I, the, the, <coughs> the dogs don't eat from the king's table. He said, I didn't come for you. I come for the Jews. Yeah. This is what she said. Come on. She said, yeah, but Jesus, even the dogs eat from the crumbs that yeah. fall from the master's <laughs> table. She hey. said, I just want a crumb this morning. Right. Amen. She said, oh, and when she said that, Jesus said this. I'm not seeing so great a faith in all of Israel. Yes, and he'd done what she had come and done. But when she showed up, she expected him to do it. Listen, I wonder this morning when you go in prayer, do you expect Jesus to answer your prayer? Oh, when you go to God in prayer and you ask him to get you out of that situation, do you expect him to get you out of it? Yeah. Or are you expecting just to, to be saved empty words? I'm here to tell you he's got the power to get you out. He's right. got the power to give you what you stand in need of. He's got the power to touch your faith account. He's got the power to touch your marriage. He's got the power to do whatever it is that you need him to do this morning. If you'll just come believing that he will do it. She came with the wrong expectation. But she was changed. Something happened there. She came with, with uh, what she received, really, and I'm done with this, was a revelation. Look what it says. Said he called her by name. He's here this morning. He's alive and he's speaking. Right. He's calling somebody by name. He's saying, I want you to come forward. And what Mary had to learn was she had been walking with eyes. She had been walking physically with Jesus for some most of his ministry. She had walked with him for almost three years, I believe it was, and she had walked with him and, and followed him faithfully. This is what Jesus said. She said, he said, you're about to have to change how you follow me. You're not going to be able to follow me physically. You're going to be able to follow me spiritually. Yeah. He said, you're going to have to have faith in me. He said, don't touch me. Oh, listen, she's been living by touch. Right. Oh, she's been oh, living right. by the Savior. He said, don't touch me. He said, I ain't went to the, my father yet. I had went in and gave the sacrifice on the mercy seat and the right. glory to, to give man redemption of all their sins. So don't touch me yet. He said, but I go, and I'm going to come to you again once I ascend. Some of y'all is waiting for Jesus and, and saying, I'm just going to follow him by touch. If I can't see him, if I can't touch him, if I can't do that, I'm not going to follow him. But Jesus said, you got to change the way you follow him got to follow by faith right and listen the bible says for you are saved by grace Dang. through faith right not yeah. of yourselves it is the gift of god if you're going to come to jesus on this day it's going to be by faith this morning amen it's going to be because you believe what the bible says it's not going to be because of what a what a, a preacher said but he's gonna you're gonna have to believe what he said 
she needed to change how she followed him. And it was by faith. And I want you to know something this morning. When we're following by faith, we can know faith tells us he's near in our time of need. Faith tells us that he's working when we can't see him working. Faith tells us that he knows what we need when we don't even know what to ask for. That's right. Faith says Jesus is on the right hand making intercession yes. for us right now. Enough, that right. With groanings, listen, that cannot even be uttered. Yep. When you get to the point, you ever been to a point in your life where you just got down and you had to pray? And it was so heavy and so distressed you couldn't even get a word out. All you could pray was tears and groans and moans. Hey, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus can interpret all that. You're right. Amen. When he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, when you get in that situation, he's saying, Lord, Father, this is what they need. If you'll let me, I'll give it to them this morning. Listen, faith says that he'll do all the things that we need him to do if we'll just believe. What about you this morning? You need a fresh encounter of faith this morning. <laughs> How many of you say, I just need him to touch me? Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, hey, man, I just need him to touch me this morning. I, I, he touched me last week, but I want him to touch me today. Right, amen. He touched me 20 years ago, and I got born again. <laughs> but, boy, I need him today. Do you know he's here? Yeah. Do you know he's working? Do you know he wants to touch you this morning? Do you know he wants to save you this morning? That's why he got up out of the grave right. over 2,000 years oh, ago man. to give you salvation. You'll have to accept it by faith this morning. You'll have to come. You'll have to say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. And if I don't get born again, I'm going to burn in hell. But I know that you can save me because you got up out of that grave. But you will. You'll come save me. Listen, there's somebody in this audience this morning. There's not a crowd this big. Listen, I, I know it's, it's Easter Sunday morning. I know it's 7 a.m. and and then usually preach to the to the, the backbone of the church in services like this, but I believe God just working this morning. Right, right. I believe God just wants to save somebody this morning. Mm -hmm. I believe God wants to work. And I believe he's here this morning. So I'll tell you what we're going to do this morning. I got a little verse, a little chorus of a song that God's put on my heart. I ain't a singer by no means. But I want to make a joyful noise to the Lord this morning. And I'm going to sing it a couple times through. And after I sing it a couple times through, I want you to join with me. I want to just sing glory to God this morning. I want to worship him in song. Yeah. Listen, you've heard the word of God this morning. You've heard truth. You've heard of a fresh encounter. You need to have that fresh encounter. You can have it today. Listen, some of you are not going to come back to worship service. This is what you're using for worship. And that's fine. That's, that, that's wonderful this morning. But don't miss a time to worship. Don't miss a time to lay down some some things to Jesus. Don't miss a time to come to salvation just because it's Easter sunrise service and there ain't no altar up here. There ain't no music playing. Maybe Jesus is calling you by name today. Say and come forth. I want you to come. Listen, we got, there ain't no altars up here, but listen, you can make an altar anywhere. Use your right. chair. Bring your chair with it and sit it down. Just get on your hands and knees and pray this morning. Maybe you can stand and pray where you at. Whatever the Lord lays upon your heart to do, I want you to do it. Be obedient this morning. The Bible says he was obedient unto death. He was obedient unto you. Be obedient unto him. And you know he's here this morning. One of my favorite little courses goes like this. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. 